Hey guys, welcome back. It is finally time for Bledisloe Cup 1. It is a big game, especially if you're down from New Zealand or Australia. It is big even here in South Africa. I'm pretty excited for this one. It is always big when these two teams go up against each other. If you do look at the two starting teams from the last All Black team that played Fiji and the last Wallaby team that played France, there's a couple of changes for both teams. Wallabies, more changes than they would probably have wanted, but a lot of it coming down to that uh, discipline issues that uh, Rennie does enforce for his team. Uh, the All Blacks, they have a couple of changes there, not that that makes them weaker whatsoever. But starting at the front rows, there are no changes for any of the two sides. Both of these two teams uh, were very impressive, impressive at scrum time. The front row for the Wallabies, uh, James Slipper, Payenga, Mosa and Alan Alalatawa, they did really well against France. One of the reasons they probably won that series. It was a close call though for the Wallabies in that, in that series against France. Uh, they are probably a little bit more prepared when it comes to the opposition or the quality opposition they did face. But Fiji... Don't, don't outrank them there. That one game they really played well. The other game the score is a little bit misleading. The front row for the All Blacks. They have Bauer who gets another nod in the starting team for the All Blacks. Cody Taylor and Nipola Lala. My big battle is the two hookers. Taylor and Payenga Mosa. Both of them getting tries down for their two teams. Especially at the back of the mall. Cody Taylor though he can sprint a couple of in. Uh, if he wants to. Then we get to the two locks. Darcy Swain, he's continuing at number four. Uh, Salakaya Lotto continuing at number five. So that tight pack for the, the tight five for the Wallabies unchanged. That's important for them because that is the five that won it for them against France. Brody Retallick coming in for the New Zealanders. That's not weakening them whatsoever. Joining his partner in Whitelock. They've been playing so many games together. Uh, Brody Retallick is still finding his feet at this level of rugby again. But I mean the big man. He's a quality player. He'll be there quite soon if he's not already there. Uh, that's quite a big task for Swain and Salakai Lotto to win the line out ball there. And I think Retallick and Whitelock will probably be favorites here then we get to the loose forwards i think there's like for likes battles here especially when you go to seven and eight uh, akira yuane he continues at six so happy to see him playing at number six i was frustrated with the blues uh, earlier this year with not playing him much in the starting team rob valatini the very powerful runner for the team uh, for the wallabies he comes in for swinton who is injured uh, or still injured this week around akira yuane you know what you get from him that barnstorming runs, you also get him. He's very good when it comes to breakdown time. Uh, all three of the loose forwards for the New Zealanders are quite good at breakdown. So that is an area they can uh, go for in this one. Michael Hooper, you know what he can do at breakdown time. And at tackling, he gives his all every single game. Dalton Papali'i, probably the surprise in this one that he is picked. But he is a specialist at breakdown time. And you can also watch him out on the wings he does love running there as well and uh, playing there and getting a couple of uh, passes through to guys to get tries. Then Adi Savia, he shifts from number 7 to number 8 up against Harry Wilson. Adi Savia, he's a powerful player as well. Such an influential player on the park. Uh, hopefully this time he wears his mouth guard so people don't talk about that after the game. Uh, Harry Wilson, he's at number 8. Uh, unfortunately for them, Naisarani is also one of those players that is out because of drinking a little bit late. So he's un Harry Wilson will want to grab his opportunity, the youngster, uh, joining a lot of Reds players in this team. Tate McDermott, also a younger guy at number nine, going up against the Centurion in this week, making his 100th cap, uh, is Aaron Smith. Massive game for Aaron Smith. Congratulations to him. One of my favorite scrum halves in the world. So I'm happy to see him uh, playing that now that hundredth game and he's been superb this year just i think that competition he has to be the best number nine in the world is really spurring him on to be in his best form of his life tate mcdermott always impressive when it comes to uh, snapping the ball at the at rucks he's not that good when it comes to his passing game his kicking game is good though as well so that passing game i think is getting better especially against that france uh, against France, he did play a bit better as well, uh, especially uh, together with a guy like Lolasio. It is necessary to have a good pass because Lolasio demands a good scrum half. 
Lolisio up against Maunga. Maunga, we know he's favorite in this one. He's a brilliant number 10, best 10 in the world at the moment. Up against Lolisio. Lolisio, he's a youngster who is really showing what he can do. He was just commanding that Wallaby side so well. One of the big reasons they did win that series at the end of the day. And he's still young. One of It's really uh, one of those things you have to look out for, for how good is this going to be this guy going to be in five years from now at number 12 i think it's a big battle with Avili in his number 12 jersey that he found this year he's so brilliant there i got another guy that's brilliant there is hunter paisami in that france series that they played he played very well with that running uh, lines of his getting onto the ball and just busting guys in front of him uh, for tries or lack of tries but sometimes it doesn't matter with how good he did run in there David Avili, you know what you get with him. He's the second playmaker for the All Blacks at the moment. Joining Anton Leonard Brown, they are kind of building a bit of a partnership as well. ALB is also uh, getting a bit better now with a guy like Avili on his inside. Ikitao and Paisami, they also building their their partnership at the moment. Out wide, there is big battles in this one. The Wallabies, you won't see Koryo Betty there, another guy that was out drinking too late, so he is also not playing this week and they will miss him he is such a hard worker for them he does everything he plays everywhere around the park he isn't just out on the wing the whole game waiting for the ball Callaway probably more of that type of winger waiting for the ball he hasn't played many tests as well and he has a big task of playing against Severis in this one who switches back to number 14 and that is where he is very dangerous so the all black wingers look, look dangerous in this one. Jordan Pataya being back at number 14 is a big winger for them. And that's important for them to have a big winger in front of Rico Ioane, who's been playing most of his rugby recently at number 13. Very impressive there as well. I've been enjoying him there. But at 11 or on the wing, he's probably at his most dangerous. Let's face it, he's such a prolific try scorer on the wing. So Jordan Pataya might have his hands full, but Pataya himself is also a very good a player to have on the park he sets up more guys around him than he actually scores himself then tom banks at number 15 he is the most experienced guy in that back line which says something for the wallabies i think he has 15 caps to his name the rest doesn't have much that's handfuls for all of them damien mckenzie he continues at number 15 being the second playmaker he's been very good this whole year for the chiefs and now for the all blacks as well let's see if he can continue it for against the wallabies as well for me, the the two front backs are very even. Uh, maybe the locks being a little bit in the favor of the All Blacks. At the backs, the Wallabies will have to be very good to outplay that All Black backline, which is very experienced versus the Wallaby pack. Then we do get to the two benches. There's a couple of changes there as well for the All Blacks. One change for the Wallabies, so they are wanting to have a pretty settled bench there. Thought we might see Quaid Cooper there, which was... A surprise inclusion in this uh, this team, I have to say. But he's not here this week around. Maybe next week. Uh, Jordan Ulisi versus Dane Coles. I have to say there, Dane Coles probably be, being favorite. Ulisi, he hasn't been that brilliant so far this whole year. Guys that have been brilliant in the front row though. Angus Bell, Tupo. Tupo, he's been so good against France. He just murdered them with that scrums. And good passes as well, playing scrum half every now and then. Tuna Kwafe Ta'avau, you don't lose anything from the scrum when they do come on. Scott Barrett, there's three Barretts on the bench for the All Blacks. There's Scott Barrett at line-out time, another leader on the park as well. A hard worker when he comes on up against Matt Phillip, who's also experienced for the team. Young Fraser McWright is on number 20. He is another fetcher on the park when he comes on. Luke Jacobson, he covers 6, 7 and 8. Such a good guy to have on your bench for the All Blacks. Brad Weber at number 21. Versus Jake Gordon, who is experienced for the Wallabies. Then the two most experienced guys on the Wallaby bench, and probably the two most experienced guys they could have had on their back line, is Matt Tumua and Reese Hodge. And with those two guys, you just cover the whole back line. So pretty good guys to have there on your bench as well, especially if you need a couple of points and need to chase the game. It is guys that are experienced enough to do that. Bowden Barrett, Jordy Barrett, you know what you get with him. Two very dangerous guys. Bowden Barrett, he's probably going to slot in at number 10 if I look at that. Uh, but he's playing a lot of rugby at number 15 at the moment. Um, Rich Mahunga is just outplaying him at the moment. But Bowden Barrett, don't count him out. He is a dangerous number 10. Jordy Barrett, he's there for his big boot. Maybe if you need to slot in points at the end of the game to win it, he is there. 
So guys, it is at Auckland Eden Park. It is a big one here, partly cloudy, quite windy, I have to say. Didn't expect that. So, I mean, they're not playing in Wellington. So it is windy. Hopefully it doesn't spoil the whole affair when it comes to kicking. Maybe that makes it more interesting when it comes to running a lot more. So guys, here I have to say the All Blacks do look more dangerous, especially that back line, which is far more experienced. So I'm going to say All Blacks to win it by, let's say, 13 points. Let me know your prediction down in the comments below. Also, if you want to check out more Bledisloe Cup uh, videos, also more Rugby Championship videos, hit the subscribe button and then I'll see you for the next one. Cheers. Bye.